Abel and I were both, actually everyone on the team, were trying to explain to people how good he is. Um, but as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. In this case, a video for a fight is worth a million words. Everything that we promised, uh, Gotti, uh, Gennady knew he had to deliver tonight. And I think he rose above anyone's expectations. We're already talking to HBO about the next fight. The date Gennady wants to fight before the end of the year. And we're really excited about Gennady. He made a statement tonight, and we truly believe that he's the best middleweight out there. Gennady, you want to say, or April, you want to say a few words first? I'm happy today. Um, today is my day. My first, my first fight in America in HBO. Thank you so much, HBO. Yeah, thank you very much to K2 also for uh, making uh, not only Nanny's dream come true, but uh, my dream come true to have another uh, uh, this level fighter. Uh, I think that uh, it's important that he stays busy now. He is 30 years old, uh, and we haven't got uh, much time to uh, be idle. So uh, hopefully uh, HBO and K2 come together and get us a fight in December, and we'll do it again. I also wanted to give a special thanks to the Turning Stone Casino. They made us feel really welcome. And this will always be remembered as the first place Gennady fought here in America. So as long as his career is and as illustrious as it becomes, this will be his, his first uh, fight here in the U.S. And so we really appreciate all the hospitality that we had here at the Turning Stone. Questions, guys? Yeah. Nestor Gibbs with TheBoxingBoys.com. Um, who are you picking for Sergio Martinez Chavez since it's a fight in your weight division? You know, it's, I think it's a very difficult fight. Uh, I think Sergio is is much better a boxer, good good boxers. And now Alexa Chavez is bigger, stronger. You know, he has good tactic. You know, I don't know. I think 50-50, maybe. Sergio is much better. Are you looking for the winner? Yes, of course. I'm ready. No way. I won. The good thing about where Gennady is at right now in the sport of boxing is his middleweight division is so deep. I didn't want to disrespect anyone by saying that he's the best middleweight. That's really the feeling on our team. But we had a great fight in Germany tonight. That's where Felix Stern lost his titles. And Daniel Giel has kind of emerged now as a, a champion of the IBF and the, and the, and the WBA. Uh, and then you got the super fight between Chavez and, and Martinez. And from our side, Gennady's ready to step in the ring with any one of those, any one of those fighters. The WBA said the, the, the winner of the Sturm fight and the winner of this fight were going to fight before the end of the year. Is that still something you're looking at? That's true. They, they uh, issued a resolution on Thursday, and it said that uh, the winners have 20 days to negotiate a deal, and if not, it goes to a first bid. And that was really designed because Sturm had gotten so many exceptions to avoid Gennady. I think now it's pretty clear to everyone why Sturm <laughs> kept getting the exceptions and paid Giel so much money uh, so that he could fight Giel instead of uh, Gennady. He wound up losing anyway, but um, you know, it's just uh, there's a lot of great fights out there, and so we'd be looking to put together the fight between uh, Gennady and uh, and, Sturm and uh, Giel in a unification. His next fight is going to be televised here in the United States again? He really wants to fight here in the U.S., and this was the first step in, in realizing that, that dream and becoming a star here in the United States. HBO uh, is committed to having him back on, especially after that type of performance. They've had rave uh, reviews over his performance and the way he just, and Proxo is a very solid guy. He's a, he's a European champion. He's a big puncher. You can see how unconventional his style was. Gennady it took him a few rounds to, to figure him out, but then he was just much too strong for him. And so we have to give a lot of credit for Proxa. He accepted the fight, which a lot of fighters wouldn't have accepted. And, um, you know, it's just one of those, to go back to the question, he definitely wants to fight here in the U.S. again. Now what I want to know is, uh, how was the training different, obviously, coming in for Pira, or an orthodox fighter, switching to Proxa, a southpaw? I don't know. Not different training, just every time hard training. My proxy is good, man. 
Yeah, he has a different style, softball. No, doesn't matter for me. No, just hard work every day, every day. I have three three months in the gym with my coach. Thank you so much, my coach. Thank you so much, my team. No, I'm ready. Doesn't matter who broke, sir. Be rock. Doesn't matter. Uh, I spoke to the matchmaker and he said Pirog's coming back in February. Is that still a fight you guys want to make? Pirog is somebody that was originally supposed to fight. He's undefeated. He has a lot of credibility. He knocked out Danny Jacobs on HBO. Um, and so if Gennady was willing to fight him before this fight, he certainly is willing to fight him after the fight. So, you know, if he's ready by February, then that might be if he still wants to fight Gennady after this performance, he would certainly be uh, someone that we'd consider, for sure. Tom, is there a particular geography in the United States that makes sense where to promote fights for Gennady? Well, the strength is um, him being so popular in the former Soviet Union. He was a, an amateur star in Kazakhstan. He was a two-time world champion. He was a silver medalist in the 2004 Olympics. And so he has really strong support. Um, the Kazakh Consul General in New York uh, supported him very much when we had the media day there. So uh, either New York, Chicago, or L.A., those are really the three cities that, that we're targeting. And then Las Vegas, you know, for one of the other fights, if there's uh, a fight that makes sense uh, there. But those would really be the cities that make the most sense for him. Briggs, I'm wondering about the, uh, you know, about the idea that you fight anyone from 54 to 68. Is that something where it would have to be like a special kind of fight or concerned about bouncing within that kind of a 14-pound frame? Uh, no, I'm working at Winke, right? For me, I feel great on 60. I feel great. And I feel great on 54. You know, I want a unification fight. That's my who. I'm ready now. I stay here. You know, look at me. I'm ready now. Please, come on, guys. It really, um, you know, we feel that he's the strongest at 160, although he can make 154 really yeah. easily. So that would really be the game plan is to have some more fights at 160. If there's a special fight at 154, he could easily drop down, as Abel, was, as Abel said. He was really on weight on Tuesday, so that, that, those last six pounds won't be a problem for him. And then if there's a fight that makes sense at 168, and it's, it's one of those special fights, then he would certainly go up and, and take them. Tom mentioned about your first fight in the U.S. Talk about that. I mean, you had some of your countrymen in the stands with flags. We had Polish fans. How did it feel and, and you know, your memories of this? Because this is a kind of a, a momentous occasion for you. You know, this is boxing. This is sport. Oh, yeah, of course. Red one and blue one. You know, just... I'm really, I feel great. You know, it doesn't matter with inside. Outside. That's my work inside. No, because I'm happy, yes, I'm happy because my country is too much. People in Kazakhstan, I'm happy. I present for him, for my country, for my people, for everybody. No, I'm happy now. This is my dream. Can you tell us something about uh, uh, the Proxa fight tonight? What happened with them? You know, this is great champ in uh, Europe, but uh, the, the style is so simple for you, his style. Uh, you know, yeah, Proxa is a good boxer, seriously. He's strong, he's good style, like maybe Sergio Mason, good mood. You know, after the first knockdown, after second round, I feel him. I feel him just I see him. If not, that's maybe. I feel great, just he can go on, you know, just time. Just I see him. Maybe for me, new. Maybe, come on, come on. Uh, okay. Five rounds. Right. Did you. Uh, yeah, it's, it's good, man. Strong. Did you feel his power when he hit you? He went for the body, for your head. You know, it's normal power, not extra power. You know, he's a good man, good woman. Not special power, you know, just 
Yeah, I told you. After the second round, I, I feel him. I see him. I just I feel him. Just not stress, you know, not panic. Just like with others, you know, just step and step and step. The interesting thing about that, yeah. about Gennady talking about his power, is that uh, Barry Hearn, Prox's promoter, after the fight, came up to me and said, Prox hit him with about four punches that would have knocked other people out, and Gennady just walked right through him. So, even though Gennady might not have felt power, certainly his record indicates that he has a lot of power, and Gennady's never been down ever in his career in the amateurs or the pros. So that's not taking anything, what he said is not taking anything away from Proxa because I think we really feel that he's a strong puncher. He just wasn't able to, to hurt Gennady with his punches tonight. Tom, what are the plans now for Rocky? Gennady definitely wants to fight before the end of the year. He wants to fight again. He came out clean in this fight, and that's really the plan. You know, depending on his radar, do you have anyone that you want to? Well, we have the immediate situation with the WBA. Depends on what deal decides to do. He has 20 days to decide if he's going to fight Gennady or vacate the title. And then after that, uh, it's all it's all open. We've already spoken to HBO, and they want to bring him back. It's just a matter of, again, getting somebody in the ring um, to fight him and then putting on another spectacular performance. One more question. Now, are you planning to stay here in the U.S. and the big day with your trainer training, or are you uh, going back to your country? No, I'm going to no, no. in Germany. No, I'm going to. Family. In September 15, I'm come back and fight to Sergio Martinez and Mr. Chavez. No more time to train. <laughs> we'll start training until yeah. uh, probably eight fight. weeks before we get a, a date. Yeah, maybe December, November. Yeah. So you're planning for Sergio now. Sergio got Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. on his radar right now, and I think that Julio Cesar Chavez will do an upset. That's my. Uh, that's my vision. I think he might do a good, amazing upset and take out Sergio. You don't believe in that? No, for me, it's seriously 50 50. Sergio is a better boxer. Kula is bigger, so that's a boxer. But they said, I'm a better man win. You did an amazing fight today. Thank you, sir. A couple last words for your fans in Poland. Thank you so much, fans. Brooks is a good man. He has a Hard, good heart, man. A strong man, not scary. A good boxer. No, I don't know who's win. I told him just win who's best. Today is my day. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, sir. The whole team. Yes. Now that you are able, uh, with Brooks's movement, was it the plan all along to go to the body to, to slow him down, or did you adjust once you saw how much he was moving in the ring? No, the plan was to go to the body, uh, but I, I think uh, Ned started out, started out a little tight. Uh, I think first time at HBO, uh, uh, first time in the U.S., it was a little tight in the first round, uh, but once he got uh, rolling a little bit, uh, touching him, he felt that, like you said, in the second round, he felt he hit him to the body and, and he hurt him. Uh, and it was just a matter of just staying busy. Uh, Prosca style is difficult to, to catch to the head uh, at times, and... If he didn't work for it, he wasn't going to get it. Uh, he, was, he was looking for a perfect shot, and it wasn't going to come until he started working the body and working the shoulders. And uh, his power and his strength is going to be, like I uh, said to, uh, to HBO, he's going to make uh, very good, good fighters look mediocre, look uh, uh, like they're not, they don't belong in there with him. And, and the power has a lot to do with it. Did you think that uh, Prox's style was a little bit reminiscent of Sergio Martinez? That's what a lot of ringsiders were saying. Yeah, yes I do, uh, and we, my, uh, my assistant and I, we looked at some tapes and we also thought he was a lot like Sergio Moore, uh, you know, uh, except this guy's left-handed. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think in picking the Prasca or agreeing to Prasca, we were looking forward to, or looking ahead I should say, to uh, maybe meeting Martinez and, and kind of getting that awkward left-hander out of the way. Tom, is uh, his next fight dependent on HBO? Network as far as a, a date, or his next fight, it, it doesn't matter the network or television. If he's going to meet Gail in Australia or in his home country, it wouldn't matter, or is it has to be a network? Doesn't matter. No, that's the good thing about Gennady. He's fought all over the all over the world in the amateurs, even in the professionals. You know, his last fight was in Kiev in Ukraine, and one of the shows that we promoted over there. Um, if it makes more sense to go to Australia and fight Edo there, 
then we'd be happy to do that. I'm sure Abel agrees with that. And it's it, the thing with Gennady, it won't be a matter of finances or location getting in the way. There will never be an excuse for him. He feels that uh, he'll fight anyone, anywhere. It just has to make sense. And if it makes more sense in Australia, we'd be happy to do that. Although HBO has indicated that they want to bring him back. And um, he appreciate, we all appreciate the opportunity HBO gave him to showcase his talent here in, the, in America. And we're definitely looking forward to coming back uh, before the end of the year. If it doesn't happen on HBO, that, means, that doesn't mean he's not going to fight. We'll definitely. Any more questions, guys? Uh, one more. You can ask say on a short notice, uh, this was a good ticket seller. In less than what, a month, you guys pretty much had this? Absolutely. We, uh, we, had, we did a lot of uh, publicity in Los Angeles. We had a press conference there. We had an open uh, workout at Abel's Gym at, uh, at the summit in Big Bear Lake. And then in New York, we were just all over the place. You know, sometimes I get a little bit, you know, concerned about a fighter getting too distracted too much media, but he was at the Yankees game. He was uh, invited to Madison Square Garden for media uh, breakfast there. He went to the Empire State Building. I mean, there were some great f photographs, and that really helped sell um, this fight night. And I think a lot of fans are happy that they either bought a ticket to come up here to Turning Stone Casino or they watched it on HBO. Uh, Tom, just to clarify, if, if Gil's team won the first bid and they decided they wanted to have that fight in Australia, but HBO wasn't interested in hauling down to Australia. What was your stance again on that? It, it, we don't need, we obviously like HBO to broadcast it, but um, there's been a lot of electrical fights that have happened in, in Europe without HBO. So if uh, they put, uh, you know, if Giel has a strong offer to go to Australia, um, it's not dependent on HBO, but we would certainly like it to be uh, on HBO, especially after his performance and after the performance against Giel. Uh, the Giel versus Sturm, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Tom, could you possibly see a uh, Kid Chocolate and uh, Gennady Lockman fights happening sometime next year in New York if it's built up the right way? Well, we could see it, right, Abel? <laughs> <laughs> we could certainly see it. I don't know if uh, Kid Chocolate or if Golden Boy sees it the same way we do. Um, he's, uh, uh, I believe he's scheduled October 20th, October 20th. Uh, on Showtime. Um, to fight at Ngcom. Ngcom from WBO. Yeah, now Ngcom is an interesting story because he was actually the mandatory for Gennady, and when we were trying to make that fight, he actually vacated the, the title. He was the interim champion, and he vacated the title to go to the WBO in order not to fight uh, Gennady, and he was actually the mandatory. So, um, I mean, that's a that's a good fight too. Quillen and uh, Ngcom is a, is a great fight. It's a world title fight, and you know whoever wins that fight, if Kid Chocolate wins that fight in New York. That certainly is, uh, or he certainly becomes an interesting opponent as well. Not an opponent, if he becomes a champion, then that would be a great unification fight uh, as well. Hey, boy, if you had your way, what would be next for you if you're not? Then the winner of Martinez Chavez. I'm so soon? Uh, yeah, uh, so soon? Why? Why not? Why not? <laughs> Uh, Martinez Chavez and then uh, unifications after that. Martinez Chavez will pl place him at the top. Now they're going to come and have to, they're going to come and have to get him. They're going to have to start calling him out as they haven't. And uh, I think once he knocks out either whichever one of those two wins, then the other guys have to stand in line and take him one at a time. Good guys. Did you did you say it was your intention to come back and attend that fight? Is yes. That, you'll yes. you'll be at Martinez Chavez. Guys, can we do maybe one photo, have Abel and, and Gennady stand up and hold the belts and if you guys, anybody wants to get a shot of them here.